Hi everyone, I have been going through a lot of changes in my personal life over the past month and I thought it might be a good time to talk about change with regards to spiritual practice and spiritual belief and how those changes can be navigated and uh, the times when we might feel stressed by those changes or as though they signify something negative but uh, in reality uh, most of the time I think it's just a case where we have to find a way to roll with the punches and to accept those changes, to work around them, uh, to shift and, and bend uh, with those changes rather than trying to be rigid uh, in the face of them and to uh, insist on maintaining the status quo and whatever it is that we were uh, practicing or believing before this change came about in our life. The first thing I'll talk about is a cornerstone spiritual practice. This is a concept that I made a video about quite a number of years ago and I do think that this is perhaps the most fundamental aspect of anybody's spiritual practice, especially anybody who's a solitary practitioner, having that one go-to practice that uh, you know yourself that if you're not doing on a regular basis that it's time to come back to centre, it's time to come back to yourself and, and uh, reassess your, your spirituality and that through engaging with that practice on a daily basis or on a weekly basis uh, that you are able to easily, readily bring yourself back into that sacred state of mind, um, that state of mind of being in reverence and uh, it's just a quick and easy way for you to feel connected and to feel centred in your spirituality. All of that is important and I, like I say, I always advocate for that. But in this video I'm going to advocate almost for the opposite. I'm going to remind you that sometimes our spiritual cornerstones fall apart. Uh, sometimes we find ourselves not engaging with that practice. Sometimes it goes by the wayside. We realise that there have been days and weeks and months even where we have not been engaging in that practice and sometimes when that happens we panic. Rather than just panicking when you realise that your spiritual cornerstone has gone by the wayside, I would counsel that you maybe have a look at your life and consider why it is that that cornerstone, that practice, has actually slipped out of your life at this time. Is it because of a spiritual slump? Is it uh, actually a red flag for you that actually maybe you need to look at your practice, you need to look at your life and bolster your spirituality, spend a bit more time and energy on it so that you don't enter into a full-on spiritual slump? Um, is it just because you're extremely busy in your mundane life? Have you just been totally drained and uh, occupied elsewhere in your life? And is it just a matter that you actually just don't have time right now for that spiritual cornerstone practice? Um, or is it actually that maybe that practice no longer serves you? Maybe you are no longer in a place where that is A, a practical uh, practice for you, or B, that maybe it doesn't even uh, bring about the same state of uh, spiritual connection and reverence for you that it used to. Maybe it's actually just not functioning for you and that's the reason that you are not coming back to it, that you have actually relinquished it. And in, in, under those circumstances it might be time to start thinking about creating a new spiritual cornerstone practice for yourself, uh, thinking about something that actually sounds more exciting and that is more likely to bring you to the altar on a repeated basis. Um, but during the times I think where it is actually just that you are very busy and that you are going through a transitional phase, that things are in flux, uh, you are reimagining yourself often. Um, I think very many of us will be going through those kinds of periods of time right now in this, I, I hesitate to say post-pandemic because it's still a problem, but uh, I, you know, most of us are able to move out in the world more now. Many of us are going back to our jobs in person. Many of us are meeting friends, meeting new people and just living our lives more fully than we were 6, 12, 18 months ago. And of course this is going to bring about a lot of change and it's going to be very overwhelming. I only realised myself yesterday just how small, or over the weekend, just how small I had made my vision of my life during the pandemic period. Uh, I think a lot of us had to scale down our ideas about the next few months or years or even over the next decade. We had to scale all that down and not think about it too much I think in order to not freak out and in order to not just feel constantly sad and as though we were missing out on our real lives. Um, but now we're in a, in a phase where maybe we can start 
uh, opening up our lives a bit and opening up our minds to um, just more exciting prospects. And that can be very overwhelming. Uh, and under those circumstances, I would always say, you know, there is a difference between a spiritual slump and a spiritual break. Um, I think so long as you are mindful of it and that you are excited to return to it when things settle down for you again, I wouldn't even classify that as a spiritual slump. I wouldn't classify it as a problem. And you might actually find that your spirituality, your beliefs and your spiritual feeling starts to emerge in other areas of your life. So long as everything is running smoothly in the inner realm, like so long as your uh, your mental health is good and your feeling of being a spiritual person is still strong. I think that just because you're not turning up at the altar, just because you're not doing your daily practice, doesn't mean that you're going to be just shutting down your spiritual self entirely. And that for me has been what has been happening over this past month. I have skipped meditations for the first time in about three years, uh, just from being so busy and so preoccupied with other parts of my life. Um, but I find myself thinking about my spirituality and thinking about my beliefs about the world and my sense of interconnectedness and uh, connectedness with other people around me, with the world around me, with cosmos, with uh, you know the infinity of time and space. I feel actually myself maybe more connected to those things than I have for quite some time because all of the changes that are happening in my life are so positive and um, it's giving me an opportunity to maybe apply some of those abstract concepts that I've been thinking about for years to real life experiences, to real life connections, real life um, challenges and so on. Uh, and I certainly don't feel any less spiritual now than I did a month ago. On the other hand, uh, back when I had just moved to Edinburgh many years ago and I, after about six months when my spiritual practice really had waned, I wasn't in a phase anymore where I felt like it was just because I was very busy that I wasn't turning up at the altar. I was having some identity crises. I was having some struggles uh, in myself and uh, in my relation to the world and my plans for the world and what I wanted to do and who I wanted to be. And that did actually translate into a big spiritual slump, a big spiritual crisis. And that then was quite difficult for me to climb back out of. Whereas at the moment, I'm not concerned. Uh, I know myself that when I have the time, I will return to the altar. And I think most importantly, that I will have new things to bring to the altar. I will have new ideas and experiences that I maybe want to reflect there. And as a result of all of that, I might find that actually I fall into that third category of wanting to maybe come up with a new uh, spiritual cornerstone. It has been honestly a very long time since my meditation practice was really, really strong. I have gone through phases of meditating for say an hour a day over the past 18 months, but for the most part it has been um, pretty, it's, it's been a pretty minor part of my spiritual practice. And it may actually be time for me to, like I say, have something different in place, in mind, for me to turn up to the altar to do. Maybe I need to return to prayer beads or uh, to just any other kind of devotional practice that might be more exciting to me, more enticing to me, and might be um, just uh, more valuable to me at this point in my life and more reflective of where I'm at uh, in myself and in my connection to the world. The other big thing I wanted to talk about uh, in this video was uh, shifting perceptions of divinity, of reality, of um, how the world works around us as a result of uh, shifting relationships with our deities, a shifting practice um, or shifting or things that are shifting in our lives, strange things that might have happened to us. Um, this is something that happens to me on a regular basis and I feel that some people are more perturbed by these shifts and transitions and changes than others. Some people are um, more able to take them in their stride and to accept that sometimes our logical version, our official version of our belief system doesn't necessarily match up with everything that actually happens to us in sacred space or in our day-to-day -day lives, that sometimes there are huge swathes of experience that don't really fit in with that official line. Uh, and some people are more, yeah, some people are less disturbed by that and some people are more disturbed. Some people are more have more of a tendency to want to pin down those changes, pin down those shifts and put maybe labels on them, put new ideas on them, uh, to find other people who have had similar experiences and similar beliefs and essentially to turn 
um, those experiences, those um, out of the box experiences into an, uh, an opportunity for further seeking, uh, to continue seeking for new information, for new belief systems and structures and so on, rather than being satisfied that the, the main system of belief is actually still functioning um, and that these deviations are okay. I don't think that either of these approaches are wrong. Um, I just think it's going to be a case of you figuring out if you go through a phase in your spirituality where things were really feeling very shaken up and you don't really have an explanation for what's happening or uh, it just it doesn't fit in with the paradigm that you're familiar with or with the structures that you've been working with so far. I think it's always worth spending some time with yourself and maybe journaling uh, thinking, you know, making audio notes, whatever way it is that you like to record and to process your thoughts. Um, it might be worthwhile doing that, um, giving yourself some extra time when you have those strange experiences or new experiences, just to ask yourself, um, you know, am I comfortable with this fitting in with the framework that I have? Am I comfortable to let something unexpected pan out? Am I comfortable to approach it um, through a new paradigm um, as though perhaps like for example if we have a strange experience where we feel very strongly that a particular deity has reached out to us and has guided us in a certain direction has made something happen in our lives and ordinarily we very much view the deities or our individual deities as being archetypes we don't believe that they can exert actual uh, impact on our lives we see them as different facets of a whole divine uh, nature of cosmos that doesn't necessarily um, take action on our lives. So if we're experiencing something like that, we might be struggling to say, well, um, A, this experience, my interpretation of this experience is not matching with my usual belief system. And then we might have to decide to ourselves, well, am I comfortable to allow that um, that tension to exist? Am I comfortable to allow myself to think about this experience um, as an experience of a deity reaching out, as an experience of a divine being taking action in my life? Am I comfortable with letting that exist in tension alongside my normal or official understanding of the world? Uh, or do I in fact maybe need to adjust? Do I need to revise my understanding of life? Do I need to revise my entire um, worldview and system of thought? Um, probably uh, at the end of the day, most people are gonna have to find some happy medium, right? Like there's always going to be a return to a core fundamental belief system. I don't think our belief system systems actually really change that much um, throughout our lives, certainly after adolescence. They tend to get quite pinned down, quite nailed down, and while we might deviate from them at certain times when certain strange things happen, we will usually find ourselves falling back on them. Um, but sometimes it is a case where perhaps the labels that we have used or the other thinkers that we have found that we have thought to ourselves, yes, that person believes the same thing as me, perhaps that wasn't as accurate as we thought it was. Perhaps there are elements of our belief system that we haven't allowed in, that we have felt dismissive of, that we haven't really engaged with fully yet. And having those um, those deviations from um, the norm in terms of our experience in life and, or um, especially in terms of our spiritual experience might be that little flag that we need to show us that actually our, our system of thought needs a little revision and needs a little bit of thought and it might be a fun and rewarding exercise for us to try to piece together something that maybe takes everything into account that makes everything make sense. But um, yeah, but ultimately I would say that, you know, it doesn't always have to make sense. Um, life at the end of the day doesn't always make sense and nobody has the answers. Um, there is no one... Uh, definitive guide to this is how the universe works and um, there are always our surprises uh, I think for, for anybody no matter what your world view. So sometimes an unexpected experience can be just chalked up to mystery and you don't have to validate that. You don't have to justify it to anybody. It is valid in itself, um, in its own right. And um, the feelings that um, arise with it, uh, the emotional response that you have to that experience, all of that is entirely valid. And yes, yeah, sometimes it just doesn't actually need to be explained. 
And finally, I'm just going to make a quick note for anybody who needs to hear it, that if you are feeling drawn right now to trying something very new, very different in your practice, uh, something, especially if it's something really out of the box, something that you really haven't explored before, tried before, that seems out of character for you, but you're curious about it and you're hesitating, I would personally advise that you just have a go, that you give it a shot. Uh, when it comes to your own personal spiritual practice, there's really no right and wrong. And I really don't think that there are mistakes that can be made. I think that if you're holding back, it might be worth asking yourself why. Is it just inertia? Is there a lev some level of fear or, or discomfort? Are you um, concerned about what this new practice might mean about your own spiritual identity or anything like that? If you have legitimate fears, of course, it's probably not a good idea to jump into something that makes you genuinely uneasy. Um, but I think if you're just finding that you're a little bit stuck and finding it difficult to get started um, and wondering if you should or if you should be overhauling that altar or completely changing up your practice or if you, you should keep playing it safe. Um, I would recommend that you go for it. I think when we feel, I mean, what is a personal spiritual practice there for if not to explore these little impulses that we have and interests that we have pulling us in this direction or the other. And at the end of the day, if you find that that idea doesn't really play out and actually that um, maybe you don't especially want to be performing this particular type of magic in your practice after all you just had a it was a whim and maybe it just didn't pan out that's okay you can always put back your altar your sacred space the way that it used to be you can go back to your old practices and you know there's nothing lost there's absolutely uh, no harm in, in doing that so that's just another little idea in this realm in this area of change that I wanted to throw out there in case anybody needed to hear that right now because I know that sometimes weirdly we just need permission we need to hear permission from someone else to say yeah go for it just do it just try it um, maybe it'll be completely life-changing for you maybe it'll just be a fun thing to do for a week but it's always worth trying so yeah I'm that's I'm gonna leave it there for for this week uh, like I say a lot of things are changing for me in my personal life I have actually taken up a part-time job uh, in, as a, in a library role again um, and that has been taking up huge amounts of my time and there are other things going on in my personal life as well um, so if you've noticed that I've been a bit quieter here on YouTube on social media that is why I have been extraordinarily busy um, over the last few weeks and I'm hoping that things will start to settle down over the next few weeks and months and that I'll be able to be a little bit more active again but yeah in case anybody was wondering where I was or if, or indeed if you were worried about me there's no need to be worried um, almost all of the things that are going on in my life are good there's you know no, it's never all good right okay there's always there's always the um, the difficult the challenges and the sad moments for us as well but um it's it's mostly all good good changes good things happening and um thanks for your patience if you have been wondering where i am so i'll leave it there thanks a million for watching let me know your thoughts down in the comments below are you finding that things are changing for you in your life at this kind of pandemic almost post pandemic phase have you has your well perhaps your country has actually gone completely back to normal because a lot of european countries actually have I'm quite jealous um of the pace of change in in many parts of europe but uh yeah are you finding that that is having a big impact on your personal life on your spirituality on how you feel as an individual i'm really curious i'd love to hear your thoughts on that as well so let me know in the comments down below don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already and you enjoyed this video and i'll be talking to you again soon